Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new platform called this Digital Discipleship. Amen. Digital Discipleship. Hallelujah. So we get ready to study God's Word today. Bless God. Bless God. We just take a couple more seconds for a few more people to get on board. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. As we go to the Lord in prayer, Father, I pray that you would touch our hearts, bless our life, minister to us as we study your word. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would reveal to us the deep truths of your word. Help us to explore and to equip ourselves in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So again, good evening to everyone, and we're glad to have you on on Digital Discipleship. This is a new platform designed to explore God's Word, and to equip us as believers to face the many challenges that exist in our world today. We want you to get your pen and notebook ready to take notes if i am going too fast you could say slow down pastor slow down amen <laughs> bless the lord bless the lord keep notes on your comment section you will see scriptures coming up amen Praise the Lord. Scripture is coming up, so you can take note of all the texts that we'll be talking about. And our topic today and for the next few weeks is knowing God's voice. Knowing God's voice. And our scripture text is John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So that is our main text for this subject and this course, Knowing the Voice of God. Knowing God's voice implies Four things. One, that there is a God. We believe that there is a God. Secondly, that God communicates with us. God communicates with us. Thirdly, that we can recognize His voice when He speaks. And fourthly, God has something to say. So let's examine each of these statements. One, there is a God. And we believe there is a God, that He exists. And this course is based upon the truth that there is a God who is revealed to man through the written record of His Word, the Holy Bible. Through the Word of God, we can know God, and we can know that God exists. Secondly, God communicates with us. The Bible is the inspired written record of God's communication to man. Let me repeat that. The Bible is the inspired written record record of God's communication to man. It details the ways which God spoke to man. 
and the response of individuals and nations to the voice of God. Oftentimes, you would see in the Bible the phrase, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, Amen. This confirms that God communicates with men and women. So God communicates with us. When we look at Numbers chapter 22, for example, we see that God spoke to Balaam, but he refused to listen. God wanted to communicate to this man so much that he actually resorted to using a donkey. And in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible tells us that God rebuked Balaam for his iniquity and used the donkey to speak to Balaam because Balaam did not want to listen. So, in God communicating with us, we understand that there is a God, that he wants to communicate with us. And thirdly, we can recognize the voice of God. We can recognize the voice of God. In John chapter 10, verse 14, 16, and 17, this is what it said. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep am um, known of mine. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. What Jesus is saying. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. One fold and one shepherd. Not a divided church. One fold, one shepherd. And my sheep, God's people, shall hear my voice. I know them, and they shall follow me. So we as believers in Christ, we can recognize the voice of God. Amen? And that is important to note. You know, I have two children, and they can be in a crowd. And if they cry out or call out to me, I can recognize their voice because uh, of their relationship with me and I with them. They can recognize my voice. And once we have an intimate relationship with our shepherd, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, we can recognize his voice. We will elaborate later down. And fourthly, God has something important to say to us. God has important something important to say to us hence the reason the topic knowing the voice of god hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 and 15 says wherefore as the holy ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Verse 15. While it is said today. If, 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 if. You will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts. As in the provocation. The temptation in the wilderness. And the provocation or the provoking of God. Mentioned in these verses. Refers to the disobedience of the nation of Israel. After Israel was delivered from Egyptian captivity, they repeatedly disobeyed when God spoke to them. In these verses, God warns us to respond when he speaks and not to disobey as Israel did. You would notice the phrase today, if you would hear his voice, the voice of God which confirms that God still speaks to men in this present time, just as he did in times of past. The warning to listen confirms that what he say or what God communicates to us is very important. 
Amen? So God, there is a God. He wants to communicate to us. We can recognize His voice. And God has something important to say to you. Amen? Now, there are many voices in this world. The Bible reveals that there are many voices clamoring for our attention. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 10 declares, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. That is what Paul said. So we want to look at four types of voices. Four types of voices as we understand this topic, knowing the voice of God. And you may want to write them down this evening. The first voice is the voice of man. The voice of man. The voice of man is easy to recognize. It is the audible voice of another human being. So, you're hearing my voice. You listen to your family members. That's the voice of man. In Acts chapter 5 verse 29, the Bible tells us, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So in this world, we have the voice of man. And sometimes the voice of man may give wise advice, good advice. Sometimes people would share suggestions and opinions. But what is important for us to know that anytime the voice of man, whether they, their wisdom, suggestions, or opinion conflicts with the voice of God, we must not obey. Let me repeat that. Anytime the voice of man conflicts with the voice of God, we must not obey. We must obey the voice of God. As the book of Acts said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Then there is a voice of Satan. So we have the voice of man. And as I said, men could give good advice, but be sure that those advice is not in contradiction to the word of God. And then we have the voice of Satan. Do you know that Satan comes and speaks to us? When we look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, 4, and 5, we see the voice of Satan in the Garden of Eden. His voice was heard by man when he spoke to Eve. Now, Satan's voice is one of lies, deception, and always attempts to lead us away into sin, lead us away from God. We can easily recognize this when we read the temptation of Jesus by Satan in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. The devil came to Jesus and tried to lure him away from God and began to even use the scriptures but not quote them in its context and begin to say to Jesus the word of God. But Jesus counteracted with the truth of the word of God. Even evil spirits, demons also have voices. Now we got to be careful of Satan's voice and demonic voices and they're very real have you ever noticed sometime you're praying and you're crying out to god and there's a voice that comes and say you're wasting time and then sometimes uh, you're getting ready to give uh, off your tithes and your offering and a voice comes and say well you shouldn't give now if a voice comes and say you shouldn't pray you shouldn't read you shouldn't go to church you shouldn't give that's not the voice of God, because the voice of God will encourage you to pray. The voice of God will encourage you to study the word. 
The voice of God will encourage us to go to the house of God. The voice of God will encourage us to obey the word of God. But the devil wants to keep us away. So we got to be careful of the voice of Satan and the voice of demons. In Acts chapter 8 verse 7 it says, For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. In the synagogue there was a man which had an unclean spirit and cried out with a loud voice in Luke chapter 4 verse 33 and 34 saying, Let us alone for what we have to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth. Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who art thou, the Holy One of God. So the devil, the voice of Satan, we got to be wary of the voice of Satan. The voice of man, the voice of Satan. Be sure that we are listening to the voice of God. You know, the devil even went before God and spoke to God and said to God, Have you considered my servant Job? So know when man is speaking, when the devil is speaking. But then, thirdly, there's a voice of self. Yes, there is the voice of self. The voice of self is man talking to himself. How many of you ever talk to yourself? Don't lift your hands. You can just smile. Nobody has seen you. I think all of us, we talk to ourselves. Not maybe in an audible voice, but maybe within our heart, within ourselves. You know, sometimes you lie down in the bed, maybe in the evening time, and you're thinking within yourself, what I'm going to cook in the morning? Or maybe what television show? Or maybe you're thinking about your work. That is the voice of self. And the voice of self is not bad in itself. It is what you're thinking. Maybe sometimes people think how they could harm others. But the voice of self in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 3 and Luke chapter 18 verse 4 and in Jonah chapter 4 verse 8, we see examples of people speaking to themselves. Now this is what the Bible warns concerning the voice of self. Amen. The voice of self is number three. So we have the voice of man, the voice of Satan, the voice of self. Amen. So I see you're following along. It says in Jeremiah 10 and 23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walk it to direct his steps. So we got to be wary of the voice of self. It is important to have ideas and even ideologies. But sometimes the voice of self can get us in trouble. So if you have an idea through the voice of self, we need to pray about it. We need to seek the wisdom of God because we can have good ideas and I've often heard one preacher said a good idea can become a bad idea. And then we want to blame everybody. And then when things don't go right, we get discouraged and frustrated. So the voice of self can lead to trouble. But if you have a thought or an idea or something comes to mind, take some time and pray about it. Let's get a God idea. God's idea never fails. God's idea never falter. This is why we need the mind of Christ. So I hope I'm not going too fast. So let's recap. There's a voice of man. There's a voice of Satan. There's a voice of self. And most importantly, as it relates to our topic, the voice of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, Believers could know God's voice and distinguish it from other voices. So, sometimes we can find ourselves listening to many voices and sometimes we could get discouraged. But we got to distinguish what is the voice of man. 
what is the voice of the devil, what is the voice of self, and what is the voice of God. In John chapter 10, verse 3 and 5, it tells us, To him the porter open it, and the sheep, most importantly, the sheep hear his voice, and he call it his own sheep by name. That is very significant. God knows your name. He knows your name, whether it's Sharon, whether it's Shirley, whether it's Mona, whether it's Halicyon, whether it's Roger, whether it's Rainy, Rain, Pastor Don, Nora, and the list goes on. Amen. There's so much of you, I can't call everybody name. Amen. Hallelujah. He called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So as we follow God, we got to know his voice. Listen for the voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Believers are compared to sheep. It is characteristic of sheep not to know where they are going. They must be led. And we are led by the Lord Jesus when we listen to his voice. Jesus said he is the shepherd or the leader of the sheep. He said the sheep would know his voice and follow him instead of the voice of man, instead of the voice of self, instead of the voice of of Satan. I guarantee you, if you follow the voice of God, it will not lead to trouble, it will not lead to frustration, it will not lead to discouragement, it would lead to healing, it would lead to blessing, it would lead to restoration, it would lead to repentance, it would lead to revival, it will lead to the preacher coming on there a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Sister Esther said to slow down a little there. So you have the voice of man, the voice of Satan, the voice of self. But most importantly, we need to know the voice of God. So let's talk about hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. When we look at Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 1 to 3 we would see that these chapters record the creation of the world and the first human beings Adam and Eve and from the time of creation God communicated his will to mankind he gave specific instructions to Adam and Eve. They were to name the animals. They tend the garden. They would have companionship with each other. And they were to reproduce, to populate the earth. But most important of all, they were to maintain an intimate fellowship with God. <clears throat> and that is very important this evening as we tie in the scripture to our relationship with God. In order for us to maintain that intimate fellowship with God, we got to distinguish the voice of God. The, this intimate fellowship with God enabled Adam and Eve to know the voice of God. If we are to know the voice of God, if we are to listen, if we are to hear if we had to adhere to the voice of God, we need to have an intimate relationship with Him. Amen? When God spoke, He communicated His plan to them. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, therefore thou shalt 
surely die. By the voice of God, the will of God was revealed to Adam and Eve. Let me repeat that. By the voice of God, the will of God was revealed to Adam and Eve. They could freely eat of every tree in the garden with the exception of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, Adam and Eve did not. Let me repeat that. They did not follow God's plan. And that's why we're in so much trouble. The world is in trouble because of Adam and Eve. <laughs> Let that sink in a little. Adam and Eve did not follow the voice of God. They listened to the voice of Satan. They listened to the voice of self. They listened to each other's voice. And they ate of the forbidden tree. When they realized what they had done, they hid themselves from God. Genesis 3, 8 and 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And look what happened. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called. He spoke to Adam and said to Adam in an audible voice, Where art thou? God spoke to Adam as he would normally speak to Adam. The Bible said he would come in the cool of the day and he would have fellowship with Adam. He would talk to Adam. They would uh, walk together and talk together. But now sin had entered because Adam and Eve failed to listen to the voice of God. It is sin which separates man from God. God did not remove his presence from man. Notice that. God did not remove his presence from man. But because of sin, man hid himself from the presence of God. Because of sin, man hid himself from the presence of God. It's right there. The Bible said God came down as he normally would. But because sin entered into the heart of Adam and Eve, they hid themselves among the trees of the garden. And God did what he normally would do, called out to Adam. Now the Bible warns us in Hebrew 3 and 15, while it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So God wants to communicate to us. But communication requires a relationship. Amen? Let me repeat that. Communication requires a relationship. God would not communicate with everybody. Those who have a relationship with Him. Now, sin separates man from intimate relationship to God. Harden his heart and hinders him from knowing the voice of God. But thank God for Jesus. Jesus has bridged the gap so that we can have an intimate relationship with a great and mighty God. So we can hear the voice of God. You and I, it doesn't matter who you are, you can hear the voice of the living God. So let's continue. I hope that you are blessed today. Let's talk about the voice and the will of God. The voice and the will of God. So we said that communication requires relationship. Communication requires relationship. And as we understand or know the voice of God, the will of God will be revealed to us. Many times people come to me and ask, Pastor, I want to know the will of God for my life. I want to accomplish the purpose of God. I want to know God's plan for my life. And maybe you are asking the same. What is God's will for me? 
Now, when we ask that question, what are we really asking? What do we actually mean when we say we want to know the will of God? It means we want to know God's general plan for our lives. It means we want to know the purpose of God for our life. And it's important to know that God has a purpose for you. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you live in London, whether you live in the United States of America, whether you live in Canada, whether you live in Guyana, whether you live in Africa, whether you live in India, whether you live in Trinidad and Tobago, Scarborough, Roxborough, Chaguanas, St. John's Village, Marabella, wherever, whatever part, God has a purpose for you. And how do we find that purpose? By knowing the voice of God. When we know the voice of God, we would hear the will of God. We want His guidance in specific decisions so we can make wise choices. We desire God's direction in every circumstances of life. So the question we should be asking is, how can I know the voice of God? How can I know the voice of God? Knowing God's voice results in finding the will of God. While you can come to the pastor or other church leaders and ask can I know the will of God or pray for me to know the will of God, but the best person to seek through prayer, through fasting, through an intimate relationship is God himself. And when he begins to speak to you, you can know his will because God wants you to know his will. Ephesians 5 and 17, it says, Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. If you know his voice, then you will understand his will as he speaks it to you. Learning to receive divine guidance is learning to walk in intimate fellowship with God. For the Bible said in Matthew 4 and 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen? The word proceeded speaks of a continuing function. It means something that happens in the past is happening in the present and will continue in the future. God speaks to communicate his will to all mankind. This is why it is important to know the voice of God. Knowing the voice of God. Now when God speaks, it's important to understand that he speaks through his word. There are two Greek words translated as word in the Bible. And those words, you probably heard them already, are logos and rhema. Logos and rhema, which refers to the written word of God. The logos, that is, refers to the written word of God. The rhema refers to the living or the life-giving word of God. So let me repeat that. The Logos word is the written, the unadulterated word of God. It cannot be changed. The Rhema word becomes alive to us. It's that life-giving word where we begin to put it to practice in our lives. In Acts chapter 17 verse 11, it says, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word, that is the rhema, with all readiness of mind and searched the scripture, logos, daily, whether those things were so. So the church 
receive the word, the rhema word, with all readiness of mind, and the search the logos daily. Be sure that the rhema lined up with the logos. You know, some in these days we have people saying, Thus say the Lord. And thus say the Lord must line up with the written word. We cannot invent. We cannot add or take away. When somebody prophesies to us, when somebody speaks a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom to us, it must line up with the will and the word of God, the Logos word of God rather. The Logos or the written word always agrees with the rhema or spoken life-given word. Amen? This is how we can know the voice the voice of God. The rhema word from God usually applies to a specific situation. It is yet to meet a personal need and provide individual guidance. Because you recognize the word as applying it to a specific need or situation in your life, it becomes a life-giving word to you. Amen? So, it maybe you're going through a situation and a word comes to heart, the Bible, the word of God comes to mind. And you apply it, that becomes the rhema. You take the logos and you apply it to your life, to, to your life, and the word comes alive to you. Amen? And that's how you defeat the enemy. The rhema word may be communicated through a sermon or a verse from the Bible, which suddenly, suddenly strikes you with great meaning. You know, sometimes you read a verse and you just read it through. And then another time you read it and you say, wow, I didn't see that before. What, what is happening there? That word came alive in a split second. It may be also, it also be, it may be, <laughs> it may also be spoken in your spirit by the Lord. The Lord can give you. A word, a revelation of his word. Sometimes you lie down in your bed and a revelation. Go and look at, at, at Matthew 6 and 33. And you open your Bible and you get a revelation from the Lord. And it is applied to your heart. So there is the Logos word, which is the written word. And there is the Rhema, where receive, yes, receiving God's revelation. It becomes alive to us as a man or woman of God speaks into your life. That rhema word is a confirmation of the logos, of the written word. So the rhema word, when somebody speaks it into your life through a sermon, or maybe somebody give you a verse, or maybe the Holy Spirit speaks into your heart, it's a confirmation of the Logos, the written word of God. They go hand in hand. Amen? Praise the Lord. As we come to a close, that we want to share this last thought as we know the voice of God. In knowing the voice of God, we must understand that there are different types of listeners. What kind of listener are you? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 26, it says, Therefore, whosoever hear this saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And every one that heareth this saying of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Two very significant things there. The foolish listener hears the voice of God, but does not act upon it. So both of them listens to the voice of God, but one acts upon it. The wise listener hears and acts upon the message of God. One listener is a hearer of the word only. The other is both a hearer and a doer. So, when it comes to knowing the voice of God, we must not only be hearers, but doers. We must respond to the voice of God. James chapter 1 verse 
22 to 25. It says, but be ye what? And you probably know the scripture, be ye doers and not hearers only. Some people only hear, but they don't want to do. The blessing is in doing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, but faith is an action word. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. So my encouragement as we hear the voice of God, let's not only hear it to get knowledge, but let's apply it to get our miracle. Let's not only hear it to get knowledge, but let's apply it to get our blessing, our miracle, our prosperity, all that we want and desire from God as we walk in an intimate relationship with God. So for some homework, <laughs> yes, some homework, look at Matthew chapter 13, the entire chapter, and you would observe the different kind of soils that Jesus talked about. And the seed sown. He talked about the seed by the wayside. And the bird snatched it up because it didn't have any root. He talked about seed in stony places. That uh, when it was sown it sprang up quickly. But then the heat came. And the plant withered away. Then he talked about the seed among the thorns. And when it was sown after it sprang up it was choked. Because of the issues of life. And then he talked about the seed on good ground. That it was sown. It brought forth a harvest. Thirty fold, sixty fold and a hundred fold. Knowing the voice of God. Obeying and acting upon the word of God. Determines the harvest. Let me repeat that. Knowing the voice of God and acting upon the word of God determines the harvest. Whether it's going to be 30, 60, or 100 fold. Amen. And I want us as believers to be fruitful. I want a hundred fold harvest. Could somebody say, Amen. I want all that God has for me. But if I want all that God has for me, I need to listen to his voice. Not listen to the voice of man. Not listen to the voice of Satan. Not listen to the voice of self. But listen to the voice of God. Doesn't matter who you are. Once you're in a relationship with God, you can know God's voice. And the more, you, the more you know his voice, the more you will know his will. The more you know the voice of God, the more you will understand the plan of God, the purpose of God, the precepts of God. And the word will truly become a light unto your part and a lamp unto your feet. When you hear the voice of God, have a good ground in the right soil and you're going to receive a mighty abundance. So yes, you and I, we are able to hear the voice of God. We can know the will of God. We can discover God's plan for our life. So as we move forward in our Christian walk, I encourage you to take time to listen to the voice of God. Jesus said, when you pray, enter into your closet 
You see, that place, that private chamber, that secret place is where God can speak to us. We must take time not only to speak to God, but take time. Part of prayer is to be quiet and listen to the voice of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you for your word today. Your word declares to us that we, your sheep, hear your voice. You know us and we follow you. You know us by name. You know us by nature. And I pray that you will speak to each one of us today. Help us to recognize, help us to distinguish your voice and help us to know your will. Father, I pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to us as we draw closer to you. I pray a blessing upon each person here this evening as we look forward to the week ahead that your strength, your grace, your goodness would be up with us, Father. I thank you, God, for blessing us and ministering to us. Hallelujah. In no other name but the name of Jesus. We do appreciate you spending this time with us for digital discipleship. We continue next week at 5 p.m. as we study God's Word. I trust that this study has been a blessing to you and to your family. If by chance you missed out anything, just click on the comments. You're going to see all the scriptures. You're going to see all the verses, some of the points. And when we complete the study, we probably would compile it into a, book, a, a booklet and make it available to you. But uh, continue to review your notes, review the points. And remember, there are four voices. A voice of man, the voice of Satan, the voice of self, but most importantly, know the voice of God. We are praying for you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Do have a blessed day. Enjoy the rest of the evening with your family. Enjoy your dinner, your bake and buljol, your roti and curry chicken, whatever you have prepared, cricks and biscuit, maybe some tea, whatever. Enjoy it. And God bless you. We'll be on tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for morning devotion. God bless.